day, everyone, and welcome to the World Policy Day of 2021. I would like to introduce our moderator of the next panel discussion, Mr. Hitesh Jain, who is Country Head of Myanmar of AGD Food and Ingredients, Inc. Uh, Mr. Hitesh Jain, I would like now to hand over the floor and the uh, procedure of our next panel discussion. Please introduce our panelists and uh, the topic of today. Thank you, Anna. And uh, firstly, I would like to warmly welcome and thank all my panelists who are sitting in different geographies to be part of this panel discussion. Just to share with my viewers that in this panel discussion, we are going to talk about how our panelists, most of them who are industry veterans, think is the way going forward for the agro exports from Myanmar. So let me have the privilege in introducing them to all of my viewers. Mr. Shrikant Suprayan is the head for Agro Vertical Tata International. Mr. Lalit Bangar, Senior Vice President and Agro Head at Swiss Singapore Overseas PT Limited. Dr. Myolin, Managing Director for Akaru in Myanmar. Mr. Girish Bafna, Director for Bafna Brothers. Mr. Sham Darsaria, CEO of RV International PT Limited. Mr. Bhavin Chedda, Managing Director for Ritika International PT Limited. Without wasting much time, uh, I would ask my first question to Mr. Shrikant Subrayan. Mr. Shrikant, with India's ambition to move towards self-sufficiency, and revolutionary regulatory changes, what impact do you see on Myanmar's pulses exports to world's biggest market, which is India? Thank you, Hitesh, for this question. Uh, the way I think about this is that uh, over the last 10 years, India has been consistently trying to increase its production and it has successfully increased its production by over 50%. Uh, nevertheless, 10 years ago also, India was the world's largest importer of pulses and even today, uh, India continues to remain the world's largest importer of pulses. The reason is that as the country's uh, economy is growing and as India is moving slowly from a developing nation to the status of a developed nation, uh, the per capita income is increasing. And slowly, the per capita consumption of pulses is also increasing. Uh, and, and, and this is the singular fact uh, which will ensure that uh, India remains uh, in some form, a net importer. Uh, as you are well aware, uh, land uh, or area under acreage has not significantly increased. Uh, and land is a constraint uh, in India. Uh, and therefore, to that extent, there are competing agro commodities that vie for the same piece of land. And hence, uh, yield is the only factor which is helping India to improve to a certain level. Uh, but if the demand does increase from here over the next 10 years by another 50%, I think that will pose uh, a challenge for India and India will need to keep uh, its import options open uh, so that in the long term, uh, the Indian interest as well as the interest of partners like Myanmar uh, who supply pulses to India are well protected. Uh, so as I see it, Myanmar is in a prime position because of its proximity to India. Uh, shipping time from Myanmar to Chennai, uh, it hardly takes two to three days. So Myanmar has been the oldest supplier and one of the most reliable suppliers of pulses to India. Uh, the whole issue is about trying to cement this relationship and to take this relationship further in the long term. This is the way I think about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And it was an excellent reply. My next question would be to Dr. Myolin. Dr. Myolin, uh, I would yeah. request if you could kindly share some data as per your resources for Myanmar producers. What, according to you, would be the current year's production for green moon bean, black mape, pigeon peas, and what would be the carry forward stocks in Myanmar? Yeah, good, good afternoon to everybody. No? Now, I, I want to sharing my data about uh, the reliable sources. The green moon bean approximate production in 2021, maybe total, maybe the 500,000 metric ton, that means the 5 lakh metric ton. Uh, counting the all three main crops. Huh? And then green mum being approximate carry for what? For 2021, it may be that it can, we can call it nil. Because it, the green mum being export is very good and harvesting and export and no carry for what is there. And for black map air, production in 2021, approximate we are now calculation is that 350,000 and carry forward for from the 2020, maybe 80,000 metric ton. And pigeon piece, 
For 2021 production may be there. Approximately, we are esti estimated 80,000 metric tons. And carry forward. Carry forward, there is a two, two kinds of carry forward. 2020 carry forward may be 10,000 metric tons. And, and 2018 plus 2019, the carry forward cargo for 2021, it may be there, one leg, uh, 15,000 metric tons. That means so that uh, the estimated the uh, grain man being totally maybe the five lakh metric ton, the uh, black market stock for available stock for the 2021 maybe four lakh thirty thousand metric ton, and pigeon pea maybe the one lakh five thousand metric ton. Thank you, doctor, for that uh, insight on the production numbers from Myanmar. My followed up question is to you again, sir. Yeah. Dr. Mueller, when farmers decide what to plant, what is that they consider normally? Since trade yeah. uncertainties are very, very high today, also please share your thoughts on the weak sowing of pigeon peas according to you. What do you think is the best way to handle this? Yeah, normally you're, you're, there is the two kinds, two kinds. I, 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 I want to explain you a little bit clearly. Normally farmers in the Noah Myanmar produce mainly the black mape and green mumbi. Yeah? While the farmer in the upper Myanmar produce a tool and gram and chana and extracture. Okay? But they always rely on the market price for them to decide what to grow. And earlier the farmers always depend on the Indian market. But nowadays what happened, quota system is now they check the average market price before they do sowing the crop. Myanmar farmers within the three successive years produce more and more green moon bean as a result of the good yield, number one. Number two, the price that they receive from the time of harvesting. Huh? And then the steady demand throughout the whole year. Other beans and Passes production in Myanmar doesn't significantly changing anything, only depending on the weather. And production varies a little only. And so in 2021, the production of the moon production, we already estimated five lakh. That means one lakh fifty thousand metric ton is more. In the meantime, urit production is less. One lakh fifty thousand metric ton less. That is the reason the farmer decided what they are changing. And then now your point of question is a tool. In the meantime, tool farmer after three successive years they do not have received the good prices. The prices available for the harvest do not even cover the production costs. That means farmer losing. Additionally, the planting time of the the planting time of the tool is a very long duration, while the yield is very very less. You everybody knowing. Therefore, in 2021, we are predicted the production will be maybe 80,000 metric ton already. That means 60 to 65 percent of the of the production of compared to the last three years. The farmer switched to the other cash crop, like the green moon, sesame, and yellow maize, and white seed. So that, and another one thing, pigeon peas, everybody knowing, bought solely by the India, because of the policy of the India buying by the quota system, and many, so, so many uncertainties of the other market demand is there. Production is less, 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 and until you can get a very limited amount of the tool production from Myanmar. Thank you. Excellent reply, doctor. And I think uh, good you have highlighted that the tool production has gone down significantly over the last couple of years, and maybe to the tune of 60 to 65%. My next question would be uh, to Mr. Girish Bhavna. Mr. Girish Bhavna, what is the current Indian production and consumption of black mape, pigeon peas, green moonbeam? 
according to you will be the will there be a surplus production for 2021 or a shortage how do you see the indian agriculture going forward sir good afternoon everybody i would like to state i would like to start by thanking myanmar pulses beans so much and association and otam for the privilege to be on this esteem panel thank you mr atis now coming to production levels for pigeon peas tour we have a carry forward stock of 0.7 million tons production as per initial estimate is approximately 3.7 million tons and with a consumption of uh, 4.2 million tons and uh, maintaining a closing stock of roughly 0.68 million tons we see a shortage of about 0.48 million tons however this are initial estimates with crop loss estimated to be about 20 to 25% due to untimely rains we could see the shortage go up to 1.2 million tons that is 12 lakhs metric tons moving on to black mape ulad we have a carry forward stock of 0.23 million tons Product production as per estimate is approximately 2.4 million tons and with a consumption of 2.7 million tons and maintaining a closing stock of roughly 0.21 million tons we see shortage of about 0.28 million tons again considering crop damage due to erratic monsoon during kharif as well as recent rabi crops this shortage could go up to 0.7 million tons that is 7 lakh metric tons for moong we have a carry forward stock of around 0.21 million tons and production is as per estimate is approximately 2.14 million tons <clears throat> and with a consumption of 2.25 million tons and maintaining a closing stock of 0.26 million tons we see shortage of about 0.16 million tons that is 1 lakh 60000 tons as far as future of indian agriculture is concerned the government is keen on doubling farmers income in the coming years for which it's actively taking various measures to new schemes and reforms and also advance research in highly yield seeds and so on based on this it would be fair to assess that in the long term india will not only be self reliant but also an exporter to the world markets but given the volatile nature of pulses production because of its undue dependence on fickle monsoons it is critical that we keep the import doors open that's it thank you excellent reply girish and uh, mr girish i think uh, thank you for sounding optimistic that india will attain its self sufficiency in fact it will be an exporter going forward in the coming years let's see how this shapes out my next question would be to mr sham mr sham as per myanmar's available stock what according to you are the potential new markets for exports from myanmar going forward it seems that crop diversification is a need of the r so how can we give confidence to the myanmar farmers to grow a crop say for example uh, lskb which is light kidney speckled bean where international buyers have never bought from myanmar it is almost like the chicken and egg situation so how does one solve this good afternoon everybody once again welcome to the world pulses day 2021 i would like to start with uh, first main basic three items of myanmar black mapte turhol and green mungbing as as mr hate asked what is the potential market first we have to understand the stock in myanmar as per our uh, expert dr mulewin black mapte the available stock for 2021 is 430000 tons now out of this 430000 tons 150 to 180000 ton goes to other parts of the world like pakistan uae bangladesh nepal and as processed dals so the available stock for india is 300000 tons but as per mr girish the shortage in india is 700000 ton so there is a gap of 400000 ton but i believe i personally this is my personal belief that the shortage is much more in india because of the excessive rain during last 4 5 months 
So the shortage may be more, and the black market shortage we can see further widening up the gap. There will be good demand for black mapte in the coming next two months. Now coming to Turhod, the available stock in Myanmar is hundred and only hundred and five thousand tons. The potential market again, the main market for Turhod is India, but still it goes to Nepal, UAE, and also as processed dals. So out of hundred and five thousand tons, we can we can export fifty or sixty thousand tons easily. To UAE, Nepal, and processed dals. So available stock in Myanmar for India will be only fifty thousand tons. So even if India doesn't buy to roll from Myanmar, it won't create big difference. But still, there is a shortage in India. As per Mr. Kiris, there is a shortage in India for four hundred, uh, somewhere around four hundred fifty thousand tons. But again, Africa is also a supplier. So. Every year, based on last four five year, every year India gave a quota for two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand tons. So this fifty thousand tons can easily go, and there will be shortage of tour hole in Myanmar in next two three months. Now coming to green moving, yes, the shortage, the gap of demand and supply is very less. The reason being, it is a sixty days crop. Every fifteen day there is green moving product crop in some parts of the India. Same like in Myanmar, there are four or five crops, different different parts. So I don't think green moving will create much impact for India side. But as we have seen, green moving production has gone up in Myanmar because of demand from China, Vietnam, and other European countries. And it is as Myanmar crop is liked by most of the countries. The quality is world, you can say number one or number two quality, and easily acceptable in every part of the world. Now coming to other uh, next question from Mr. Hitesh, which is crop diversification. Yes, crop diversification is the need of the hour. Myanmar should not depend on any one or two country, as we have seen past three years back, when India impo imposed the quantitative restrictions. The price of black mapte to hold. Went down almost half of the cost price. Like black map, they went down to two hundred seventy, eighty dollars FOB. Tour hole went down to two hundred fifty FOB. That time was very bad for Myanmar farmers, but still, they learned a lesson. They, as uh, Dr. Mulewin said, from three hundred thousand production, now they have reduced to almost eighty thousand. So okay, it's a smart move, and similarly. Black mapte, the average production of India, uh, Myanmar was six hundred thousand ton. That also they have reduced to four hundred, now three fifty thousand ton, which is again smart move. And green booming production, which was somewhere around three hundred thousand ton, they have doubled it to six hundred thousand ton. Now, if Myanmar try the new items, uh, like example given by Mr. Hitesh, LSKB. Yes, Myanmar has been growing LSKB since last five ten years. The demand is quite good, but it is not very noticeable quantity. Only say 500 or 1,000 tons maximum. There is a growth, but it is acceptable by most of parts of the world. Myanmar should grow LSKB, but in the limited quantity. Every year, step by step, like next year, 5,000 tons, then 10,000 tons, so that this quality is acceptable and marketed in other parts of the world. But I would advise. Other important items like black ibin, which is very, very, very good item for Myanmar to grow, because it fetches very good price, somewhere around one thousand dollar over, and it is grown in thousand parts of Myanmar. Current production is around thirty to forty thousand tons for the past three four years. Myanmar can grow up to six sixty seventy eighty thousand tons. Again, other items like bamboo beans. Red mung beans, which is introduced this year, soya beans, which is again a world commodity. Myanmar should increase production of all this. Yes, it is. Thank you, Sham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sham, for that insight. And I think I hope uh, the listeners uh, from Myanmar are catching up with your comments. And uh, let's see where, whether we can increase the production of BB as advised by you. My next question would be to Mr. Shilkant. Mr. Shilkant, it is good on the part of every country to aim self-sufficiency. however since agriculture in most of the most of the parts of the world still depends on weather maya particularly in india 
where most of the area is rain fed what will happen in a situation where you have two consecutive rain deficient years and the farmers in myanmar have already switched to other crops i think uh, hitesh this is the most important uh, question you know uh, of this session that you asked uh, you know i think uh, we all have to remember that uh, agriculture in general is affected by the vagaries of weather and with climate change uh, we are faced with you know too much rain too little rain uh, you know as we are speaking in this year this is a la nina year and you know and uh, while we are coming into the season with some deficit uh, the coming year in india we could potentially have excess rain as well so we are going to have one year of you know uh, with some shortage uh, due to unseasonal rains and now we are going to probably come to this year uh, and in this coming monsoon we may have the potential if the lanina plays through of having uh, you know very high rains which in turn can also affect crops so when things like this happen the need for imports becomes even more exaggerated and uh, you know uh, i was just hearing you know mr uh, mulin talk about uh, prices of tuar coming to eight, you know production of tuar coming down to 80000 tons it's very sad that uh, farmers are looking to previous prices to produce next year's crop one has to understand the supply and demand economics of the coming season to decide what to plant and very often at least my three decades of experience has shown me that you have to be contra uh, intuitive in all of this rather than follow previous trends so the way i see it is that if the next year is going to be a shortage in tuar rather than going to some of these other commodities and trying to do it actually producing 300000 tons of tuar may really help because india could be a big importer of tuar if this coming season also there is an additional deficit on the back of a already built up deficit the second point that mr bhavan did not talk about is that the government and the nafed which buys uh, is almost down to zero stocks of tuar so if they come up and you know pick up maybe a million tons or so they are i think already going to buy about 700 or 1000 tons but if they there is a chance that if there is a second wave of covid or something like that and the pds intervention increases they may come up and consume some more of these pulses and if they do consume then the availability for the free market reduces even more and hence there is a need uh, for farmers to be looking forward rather than backward and i think it is our job as industry to educate them and also since you've asked this in the question the, of light of government to government interaction as well i think if there can be a collaborative effort you know with the governments uh, and the trade bodies of both countries to work with each other i think we can estimate the requirements better so that the farmers of myanmar are also aligned with the requirements of india uh, but on a forward looking basis rather than what happened last year because what happened last year is that say for example you know moong prices were very high and you go and produce more moong and if india has a great moong crop and china has already you know picked up a lot then what happens is you price it at 1100 dollars and the prices come down to 800 dollars and you are back to square one right so 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 this is typically the problem with farmers is that farmers are backward looking and it is our job to help them because we do all these snd we do all of this that can we do this in a timely manner and can some of these conferences be done uh, you know a couple of months before planting so that some reasonable estimation can be given to the farmers and we as a body work together to ensure that the supply and demand there is some correlation and 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 we produce the right things at the right time in the best interest of both countries and if we can have this kind of a symbiotic relationship i think it will be very healthy and prosperous for the customers of india and the farmers of myanmar okay uh, the other way i look at all of this is that uh, you know especially for black market uh, myanmar is probably the sole supplier to india whether we can try and work uh, you know this even more closely you know and whether you know a regular quota is announced so that there is currently it is zero or you know whatever gets announced so can there be some sort of a communication it's just a brainstorming idea maybe for everybody to think through but can a minimum be announced that no matter what we will at least import 150000 tons or 250000 tons from myanmar 
So Myanmar gets a floor, but above the floor will can then depend on the supply demand and you know what happens. So what happens is that people are comfortable that there is a floor of demand and there is a minimum and then the extra can depend on the vagaries of weather. So things like this, which are practical, I think if we can discuss, uh, then it will help both the economies to do well. This is the way I'd like to think about it. Happy to take any follow-up questions, you know, uh, to, you know, if you want to discuss this and deliberate this further. Thank you. So thank you so much for that uh, insight. And I think, uh, I hope the governments from uh, both the sides are listening to you very carefully. And they make a note of this point that there is a correlation which is required before they plant, uh, before they plant and they go as per the global standards uh, which is demand versus supply. At OTA, I can assure you that it's our continuous endeavor uh, to keep uh, the local association in the loop to give them the insights about what is globally more acceptable and so on. So that, that is something what we have been practicing over here, sir. And I think uh, sooner or later, I think we, we might see some results going forward. My next question would be to Mr. Bhavin Chedda. Mr. Bhavin, after the increase on the MSP price in India for pulses, what difference does it make for the Myanmar exports according to you? Thank you, Itesh. Good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, I would like to thank OTA for giving me such a nice opportunity to speak on global front. Coming back to your question, the MSP mechanism in India was instituted to guarantee a minimum price to the farmers. So he's assured of a buyer of whatever quantity he grows. At such a minimum assured rate, the farmers get a return for his land and labor. However, for pulses, the price has not been suitably hiked like it has been for wheat and rice. Modi government wants to double the farmers' income by 2022. And hiking MSP of pulses does several things. It designs the farmers to grow more as well as it helps them to produce more in such a way where they can meet the demand to it. How they can do it is by using less water, which takes nitrogen from the air, deposits in the soil, and assists in the protein security of large number of vegetarian population. The effect of which has been manifolded. It has helped to raise the commodity prices in various parts of the country, thereby allowing the exports nation like Myanmar to receive a higher rate. The same is not possible for Canada and Australia, whose pulses attract a higher import duty in India, thereby limit the prices there for the farmers, they can get it. However, and very luckily for Myanmar farmers, such is not the case, and they have benefited fully from the higher MSP regime in India. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhavin, for that wonderful reply of yours. My next question is, to Mr. Lalit Bangar. Sir, if there is a shortage as per Mr. Bafna, then how are we going to fulfill the demand? And as per Mr. Sham, there are new potential markets. What are your views or what do you want to add over here? Yeah, first of all, thanks to OTA and other organizations to make me part of a panel of these distinguished speakers. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our world viewers and listeners. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Hitesh, uh, any country which is uh, falling short in supplies, obviously they have to meet either th increasing their production or through their imports. Now, as we have seen that Indian side, the land is being used to the maximum and there are more than 50% land is uh, depend on the rain, uh, rains uh, and monsoons. So as such, uh, definitely import is a big answer and uh, India is going to be remaining a big importer, exporter, consumer always. So the Indian government has to keep a close watch on the production numbers, weather, the pattern, the demand, and then formulate the policies, keeping in view the interest of the consumers, of the farmers, and at the same time, the trade bodies. So what I personally feel is that what we have seen last year, the debacle due to the delay in issuance of the licenses, we saw the prices uh, uh, shooting out to the roof and then coming down heavily when the pigeon peas imports uh, quota was extended for a certain period and lots and lots of quantity of pigeon peas came to India. 
So, in my opinion, if you ask me, the, 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 there is a fair estimate of the total demand, consumption, and production anyway. So, they should release the quotas and licenses at the beginning of the year, say in the March or April, with one year validity. So, you know, that will really help everybody to plan their, their uh, supplies and imports and exports and, uh, you know, all over. This will be a healthy uh, situation for, for all the players in uh, overseas market as well as in India also. So this will plan, uh, this will help them to plan their imports and their production. I, I feel that uh, that will really help in a, making a price stability to great extent. Uh, and we have seen about this development of other products as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Sham also mentioned about LSKB and other, some other products. Yes, certainly it is the time that Myanmar should not depend upon these three main products only. And uh, whereas uh, there is LSKB, there's a black eye bean, and there's some more products which they can really uh, grow and increase the production and really make them, uh, make the world realize that they are, they, they are good qualities available. And at the same time, like there's a wild thought, uh, like black, pushing the black market into China. Why not? There should be an attempt, uh, 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 serious attempt to promote black market pay into China also. Like, you know, if you've seen uh, Canon yellow peas, was not that popular in these destination markets. But uh, I remember that for continuous effort to put make this popular uh, for two and three years, two to three years about uh, all Canadian associations, Canada, Pulse uh, Canada, they make conscious efforts to really promote and make the Velo piece popular in the destination market. And you can see the result today. So likewise, you know, we or maybe going for green moon beans, uh, uh, tie up with the, some of these uh, uh, protein, uh, food, or snacks manufacturers, uh, Beyond Burger, or any of these these uh, big players. Now there are a lot of novice ideas which is coming out of the box, and uh, we should try to you know get uh, uh, value addition for value addition different products to be put pushed in the market. So that will help. And guys, you know pulses has been a traditional item, but I think this is the time to innovate, and uh, we have to find a new way and new products to do business to really see that Myanmar uh, further succeeds in um, making their other products popular as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lalit. I think an excellent reply again. I think COVID has helped us in some way. It has actually challenged that uh, staying fit is, is a new world in which we are entering. And you'll hear a lot of people now talk about protein, protein consumption and all that. That was never the case earlier, as 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 you know, uh, the time before COVID was. Absolutely. So I think I hope uh, people are listening to your views on this, and uh, let's see how we go forward on this. My next question is to Dr. Myolin. Myanmar's quality of green moon bean is considered to be the second best quality in the world. Production has also increased from about, say, for example, three hundred thousand tons in twenty sixteen to five hundred thousand tons, as you mentioned today in twenty twenty. Do you see further rise in going forward? What are the possible markets Myanmar should focus apart from China, where there is a continuous demand, a fixed buyer to its produce? Okay. Yeah, your question is a very good question for green mumming itself. Myanmar producing, yeah, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are telling second best quality. I, my, I, I want to tell you maybe the second best or maybe the best quality in the world production because Myanmar producing the big quantity of the green moon bean, about 500,000 metric tons. Out of that, I want to mention a little bit about this 3 lakh and 50,000 metric tons. Is, we can call it the lower Myanmar. This January, February, March crop is there. This is the best crop in Myanmar. And we produce about uh, 4 mm, 3.5 millimeter, or something like that. Huh? And another one question you are asking, this green mom being itself, China is a big market. It's big market. Big, big. And China is job, job, job graphically, Myanmar and China, border trade also there, and normal trade also there. That means that China is a big market, and logistically, China is a very, very important. And, and then the green mom being, the whole world consumption, according to my knowledge and experience, higher and higher in each and every year with the steady demands. Throughout the whole year, 
not the fluctuation like this. Therefore, there is even more production in Myanmar. Or also in the whole world also, you know very well, Africa also now producing, Latin America also producing, and this CIS country also producing. Still, the supply and demand is still at the equilibrium. That means that, 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 that the whole world consumption is very, very high now. And my, according to my experience, the, the demand will be maybe more and more demand for the whole world. That means China market is a big market. There are great man being, there is a great man being. The whole world, they are consumed like that, three ways. One premium quality, like a sprouting market, and full grade, and then milling grade. And then finally, what? Hustless split, we can call it Munda. So, green bombing production will be high, but still, the demand is steady and demand also still high. And farmers, what happened now? The Mr. Sham also telling, and the, the one, the, they are calling, they are telling, every 60 to 70 days, green bombing crop is there. But that, that, that means planting time also short, and that the price also very high. Farmer, they are happy. Producers are happy, and then the traders happy. And the whatever this uh, trade certainty also too much. That means that therefore that green bombing production demand and trading where we very very future is very bright. Thank you, sir, for that optimistic view of yours for Green Moon Bean, since you mentioned Mr. Sham. So let me have a followed up question to Mr. Sham. Mr. Sham, do you agree with uh, Dr. Mullin for Green Moon Bean? What are your views on this, sir? I completely <coughs> agree with Dr. Mullin. He said the producers are happy, traders are happy. I would like to say even the consumers are happy. We feel, like in India, we feel that Green Moon Bean it's very easy to digest. If somebody have any stomach problem, we suggest eat green mung bean dal. It is easy to digest. But I feel after the SARS, China start consuming green mung bean in bigger quantity. They have their own production. Earlier they used to export. But after SARS, China start consuming more quantity. They even start importing, and now it has become the world's biggest importer for green moon bean. I feel Myanmar still have potential to go grow more green moon beans. The current production is somewhere around 500,000 tons. I feel next two or three years, Myanmar can grow around 750,000 tons green moon bean. And it is advisable also because fast to grow and quality is considered worldwide as one of the best quality of green movement. Thank you, Itesh. Thank you, Mr. Sham, for your insights. And I think uh, thanks for the agreement, what you have. Uh, I am basically a Jain. And uh, I think uh, let's just, on a lighter note, just share that when we do a fasting, a Jain fasting, and when we open up this fasting the next day after the sunrise, the first thing what we eat is green moon bean. So I think uh, this actually shows that the protein levels of green moon bean is, has been followed from ages. It's not about today or tomorrow what we've been discussing, but this has been a followed up practice from the last many centuries as what I have seen this. My next question would be to Mr. Lalit Bangar. Uh, Mr. Lalit, we have all witnessed the drop in the Prision peas production, which was approximately 300,000 tons until 2016. But post the quota announcements, it has reached to approximately 50% reduce from 2016, which is sizable drops. Rumors for 2021 is that yes, this year, the production should be anywhere around 80,000 tons. Do you think uh, if the quota continues, we may see a similar fall in the production for MAPE? See, there are two different uh, pulses uh, have a different uh, dynamics. So tour hole and black mud pay, I would just like to narrate some of these characteristics of these two products and the origins and all. So uh, tour hole has got various other competitor origins 
with Myanmar. Uh, say African countries, Tanzania, Malawi, Bojambik, and of late Sudan. You know, in fact, Sudan has really come up with a very decent and quite good quality, which is as good as Myanmar red or lemon quality. So there are a lot of competitions for uh, Myanmar tour, uh, so which uh, really uh, allows the Indian importers to switch to these uh, origins. And incidentally, they are not very far from India also. So the voyage time is equally competitive. So, but the black mud is concerned, Myanmar is the only producer in the world other than India for black mud clay. So India will have to depend on black mud imports uh, from Myanmar. Secondly, two prices are getting impacted by other pulses also, like say, lentils or chickpeas, and they do uh, uh, impact the prices of other pulses as well. So there is a reciprocal relationship with two or another pulses as well. Whereas black mud paste, you can say independent king, you know, that, that uh, it doesn't really um, get impacted by any of the other pulse prices pulses. Thirdly, the black mud paste got relatively longer shelf life and lesser quality issues. So, you know, in one year, if there is extra production uh, in Myanmar for black mud pay, the uh, producers or stockists can still carry on to one or two more years without having much quality problem with the quality. So there they have advantage than the tour hall. Next, tour hall is the limited market destinations like India, Nepal, and UAE. They are the main key markets for tour hall. Whereas uh, for black mud pay, Besides uh, India, Nepal, and UAE, we can have Pakistan and Bangladesh also, which is very sizable market. So this, these are all which I feel personally, and, and, and what I just now heard from Mr. Girish and uh, Dr. Mjolvin about the production numbers. I'm a bit even more concerned that if the shortage is going to be 700,000 tons in India for black mud pay, uh, who the India would look to for, for to, to meet the demand supply gap. So definitely, I don't see this threat on the black mud pay of the quota system or uh, whatever uh, tariff barriers or the government wants to put. So I think there is lesser worry for black mud pay producers and Myanmar on black mud pay. Uh, but Turhol also, as uh, Mr. Shikant also said, that it is the, usually the farmer's uh, mentality or tendency to grow the pulses looking to the history. They don't look to the prospects of the future or for demand. So then next year, they, re they repeat the same mistake. When there is a good demand, prices goes too high, they grow double. They make it 150%. So rather than that, and as, as the, if the production and these consumption numbers are shared among the broader, different governments and different bodies, and OTA is really doing fantastic job in last uh, few months. I've seen uh, OTA is tremendously helping the industry and they have come up uh, very nicely. So I think with that, we can have that all these uncertainty really uh, lie to the uh, rest, you know, so uh, quota systems or any quantity restrictions or tariff barriers. I, I will personally believe that this would not have much impact on black market. And going forward, if the PGNP scenario remains the same, which is this year, we have seen the untimely rains in the south, the shortage in the production, the, the yield is less, the seed size, as I came to know last week, that the seed size of the two rows is also small. So there's a yield issue. So again, you will see the government issuing more quotas this year. So then, uh, but as, as I mentioned, for two, there is an alternate origins available, alternate uh, sources available, which is not true in Black Mart Pay. So I personally believe that Black Mart Pay producers or growers should not have any issue uh, or any threat of quota systems. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your uh, insight. And uh, I once again thank you for... Uh, having a close follow-up what OTA is doing. I think as I mentioned earlier also, that it's our continuous endeavor to ensure that uh, we talk about Myanmar and Myanmar agriculture more and more. And we try to bridge the gap between the local association and the international bodies. My next question would be to Mr. Girish Bafna. Mr. Girish, you have been doing business with Myanmar for more than three decades. Where according to you, Myanmar stands compared to other countries with respect to ease of doing business as well as the challenges? As far as ease of doing business is concerned with Myanmar, there, ha there, have been, there have been always been various policies which support and encourage trade between the two countries. However, there have been some changes over the last few years with India, with India's push for self-reliance, with certain restriction in place, which, which has resulted in a quota system. 
which requires the millers to apply for the license every time a quota is released. However, Myanmar, in comparison to other countries, have adapted well to the changes and started offering prompt shipment as well as arranging direct vessel service to Chennai port to comply with time-bound uh, restrictions which are in place. Also, Myanmar and India have an advantage of being in a si similar time zone, which means it's easier to fulfill any instant demand even at odd hours. Myanmar has also been accommodative in instances when it comes to changes in documentation, where they were able to process the changes with a short turnaround. However, to further improve the ease of business between us, there are certain issues which can be addressed. For instance, we see different liners from Myanmar collect exorbitant charges at destination port, which are about 40% higher compared to goods imported from other countries. If these charges are included in the freight, it can help in standardizing of these charges and help with faster clearance of the cargoes. Also, detention charges of different liners vary a lot, which if mentioned in their BL, it can be streamlined. It is also important to note that rules and procedures on import into India are now being followed more strictly by the respective departments, which have caused some hiccups, be in terms of quality or even documentation from customs, plan quarantine, and FSI, FSSAI, where there have been instances of rejections. For example, FSSAI only FSSI AI only allows 0.25% foreign matter, whereas Myanmar standard source allows 1%. And at passing time, it might be more difficult to manage difficult to manage these exceptions. So all need to be more aware to ensure smooth operation going forward. That's it. Thank you, Girish. Uh, and I think uh, I hope the shipping lines are listening to you, and they come up with uh, a mechanism where uh, I think your uh, grievances are being addressed. My next question is to Mr. Bhavin Chedda. How do you see the availability of containers in the coming months? Last few months, we have witnessed a robust jump on the freights. Thank you, Hidesh. For the question, in my view, freight rates have mainly gone up due to high exports volume from China. Due to COVID, there was a sudden increase in daily use necessity and exercise goods from China to North America and Europe. France and UK faced a second lockdown in November and December, and Europe was also preparing for the third wave. Demand in containers exceeded the supply and shipping line got privatized for the containers for long haul shipments, affecting container shortage in Asia, also in Southeast Asia. Increase in export demand from Yangon cause of India government quota of MAPE and Tuvar, but what added up is the congestion in transshipment ports, bunker charges. Also, most important was lack of manpower in transshipment ports, causing delays. And thereafter, the chartering vessel cost also went up. As per my understanding, it is we have already seen the peak of freight rates and gradually it should come down. But the equipment demand will continue till the first quarter of the year. And this may allow the rate to maintain a certain level after correction. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavin, for your insights. Uh, my last question would be to Mr. Lalit Bangar. Uh, Mr. Lalit, what are the global challenges uh, and changes you see which are poised to impact Pulse's industry? Lots and lots of changes are happening all over. In fact, uh, I've been associated with the Pulse industry for almost two and a half years. And uh, post COVID uh, and during the COVID, we have seen many changes which has never happened in past so many years. The first and foremost change is the ambition of all the countries move towards self-sufficiency. The COVID has really taught uh, the whole world to how to change the whole philosophy of going global from early it was localization to globalization. And now the whole scenario has changed and all the industries are moving for globalization to localization. And of course, India is really making lots and lots of effort in this uh, regard. So, the, the, so which is why we see a lot of frequent regulatory changes. 
uh, which is one biggest change which I have seen in last so many years. Last, if you must have seen, only last three years there are so many changes. The quota, quota restrictions, the tariff barrier, Nepal stopping again the banning the imports of peas, and somebody putting uh, phyto restrictions. Some are putting GMO non GMO restrictions. So lots and lots of changes happening. So we have to really be uh, uh, all the time uh, be fully awake and ready to accept and adapt these changes. Uh, secondly, you know, as Mr. Bhavan also mentioned, uh, the after everything is done, the logistics challenges, which is totally unexpected, poor conditions, the shipments are delayed, the containers are stuck, the freight rates are going up. Uh, in, in fact, I was just reading last week, there is a statistic which has come up with 37% of the containers, the business happened last year, 37% uh, of the containers were carried over to the next shipment schedule. So you can imagine one third of your shipments are being delayed. So in case you are just making a shipment just in the, during last uh, week or so, definitely you are out of the contract terms, so, which is a phenomenal change. And then there are environmental imbalances, which we know uh, untimely rains, uh, you see El Nino, La Nino, we have this uh, uh, La Nina and other such impact, which is anyway, uh, the affects our industry in a big way. So more and more occurrence of such uh, uh, events are further affecting our industry. Another is that higher volatility in the currency exchange rate. You see, we see intraday sometimes 1% uh, currency exchange rates are deviating. So we are working on a 1% and 1.5% margin. And if, if, God forbid, if any of your exposure remains uncovered for your currency exchange, uh, then you are, you are really gone for it. So that is another big change. Uh, I remember a couple of years back, the volatility in the exchange rate used to be 1% to 2% in a whole year. Uh, now you see intraday at times uh, it's, it's changing. Uh, these are the external factors which I feel but another internal factor which I feel today is very important, that diminishing commitment values. Uh, all these factors are really uh, making the uh, market uh, fluctuation for prices uh, uh, drastic, very drastic, and it is affecting everybody's pocket. So going forward, I am very worried about really the falling commitment values. We have seen all our good players, good suppliers, good buyers really becoming technical on contract terms. Uh, their value, which they used to follow earlier in earlier years, are terribly uh, impacted. And they, they, they're, there are a lot of instances where uh, your, your good friend, your, your regular buyer, regular broker or regular supplier, is getting out of the content on these technical terms. In fact, OTA has uh, stood for one of the such instances in which happened for two whole uh, issue last year. And I really compliment once again OTA to get into it and they really resolve the issue to, to the best of it. But that problem also we have faced. So going forward, we really do make sure that we do good business with right people and with right supplier, right buyers. I think this is what uh, I can submit and volatility is going to be there anyway. So, but as I always say that so long as the human hair are grown, barber business is always flourishing. So, so much human are there on the earth, they will keep eating pulses and we should not be worried about all these changes. Let's, let's really welcome these changes and embrace and then handle it and tackle it carefully. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bangar. I think uh, on a lighter note, I can say that Pulse's business is actually keeping us fit with the policy changes we are running from one corner to the other. Absolutely. It has Absolutely. helped us in some way or the other to stay fit. Absolutely. Uh, with this, I think, uh, sir, I would like to conclude uh, my, uh, my panel discussion over here being a moderator. And I once again thank all the panelists who just uh, pulled out uh, their time from the busy schedule what they are. So thank you, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching us. And thank you, all my panelists, for being here. Thank you so much, sir.